Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our next lecture in our fundamental music theory class. And today we'll be talking about meter, note duration, and pitch, or really the fundamentals of European art music theory. So what we're doing this week is building from where we left off. Last week, we talked about music can be more or less ordered. You have free rhythm, which is the apparent absence of rhythm in music, or you can have metrical uh, rhythm, which is more ordered. There was a little bit of confusion though. Sometimes uh, people seem to be associating uh, music without drums and percussion as free music. And that's not really the case. Music that's a cappella or music that is uh, choral music, especially, uh, is actually very rhythmic generally. So just see if you can feel a pulse or not. If it's really long and slow, well, actually you might be getting towards free rhythm. But if you have multiple people singing at the same time, you could almost bet that there's some kind of rhythm. Not, not always, but uh, it's a pretty good bet. Okay, just wanted to clear that up. Okay, so let's talk about European art music theory or AKA classical music theory. This theory uses time signatures to designate meter. And again, meter is the cyclical rhythmic organizing pattern. The two numbers on the right constitute the time signature, and that might be in your way. So you can see time signatures over there. The top number is how many, while the bottom number is the duration of the time used to designate each beat. So the top one is how many beats per cycle, and the bottom is how that beat is written. Okay, so the next question is, what do you mean how it's written? So time signature depends upon duration to determine the amount of beats per measure. Okay, three terms here. So written music has different rhythmic durations that can be written into the note. The quarter note is a black dot or a note head with a stem, and that's always the case. In 4-4 four, four time, what we have are four quarter notes. This means the quarter note equals the pulse of the beat. This means we'll have four beats before repeating the count. So we can see the four quarter notes up on the screen. So how would it would work is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's the meter or the time signature for what we see written up above then the measure is one complete cycle. That's always delineated by the bar line. A measure is also known as a bar. And the bar line denotes the end of the measure. So that's the end of the four count. Again, if you were to play this, uh, you could sing it, you could clap it. This is what's called a rhythm chart. It would just be one, two, three, four. We just only have one rhythm, but <laughs> that's how it would work. Okay, so there are a variety of different written rhythmic values that we will be using throughout the quarter. We're gonna be fo focusing on four for the first week. The whole note is equal to four quarter notes or a whole measure of four four. It should be noted that four four is often known as common time. Four four is a very common time signature in Western art music. The half note, in turn, represents half a 4-4 four, four measure, or two quarter notes. Notice that the note head is now empty, and but it also has a stem. So it's like a quarter note, except with an empty note head. The eighth note is one eighth of a 4-4 four, four measure, or half a quarter note. Also, you could say two eighth notes equals a quarter note. This is kind of basic fraction math. If you get scared of math, don't worry. Just Look at the pictures and <laughs> just remember how many equals what, and you'll be fine. Or, you know, take it as an opportunity to refresh a skill that intimidated you. A 16th note is a 16th of a measure of 4-4, four, four, or it's a quarter of a quarter note. Another way to put it, four 16th notes equals one quarter note, which in this case is one beat. So you can see you have one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 notes per measure. Hence a 16th note. By the way, what you're looking at in the eighth notes and 16th notes are beams. See, one has two beams and one has one beam. If you were to write the notes individually, you would see flags. So for an eighth note, you have one flag and for a 16th note, you have two flags. This can continue up to the 64ths. So you'll have 30 seconds, which have three flags or three beams and 64ths that have four flags or four beams. That's a lot of notes. Ah, the head is now in a new place. Okay, so we covered duration. Let's talk about pitch and the musical alphabet. So you may have heard of the musical alphabet, but it relates to the keyboard. Notes have patterns and spaces. And the keyboard is a great example of that. What we're going to talk now are the white keys on the keyboard. So if you remember, the musical alphabet begins with the letter A. Then it B follows, which is the next white key. Notice that there's a key in between. I put a dot in there. And then right after that, you have C. Then we have D is the next white key. E, F is right next door. Then you have G is the next white key. And then it's back to A. And this cycle continues over and over. This could also be written out like this. You have A dot is equal to a space. B, C, is they're always together. They're besties. Then you have a space D, a space E, F, and then a space to G. Basically, all keys need a space between them with the exception of B, C, and E, F. It's like they're besties. Everybody else needs their space. This is similar to how you would find notes on a guitar string. So the guitar has the letters E, A, D, G, B, and E designating the six strings. So if you took the A string, you would put these notes out by skipping the first fret and writing B above the second. Then C would be on the fret adjacent. Then you have D, because it needs its space to skip uh, down to E, F, E and F are besties, right? So they're on adjacent frets. And again, everyone's a loner, so G gets a space. And at the 12th fret, you are back to A. That's an important thing to note. At 12, things repeat. The same thing happens on the piano. After 12 keys, you're back to the same letter. That's including the black keys. OK, so let's apply this knowledge to the treble clef and note reading. So see that highlighted sign? That is the treble clef also known as the G clef. A clef names a note on the staff. The staff are the lines and spaces that represent notes. This is a common system for European art music. The clef is what locates a specific note to determine what those lines and spaces mean. The G clef denotes G, and technically it's G4. The book will explain how that all works. What you see there, though, is in the middle where that arrow points, there's a, the, it's kind of a funny looking G that circles that second line. That is now labeled G. So again, we've got the staff here. The G clef means the second line from the bottom represents G. That means the lines are often denoted as every guitarist begins doing fine, or every good boy begin, uh, deserves fudge. There's a whole list of things you can come up so that you can think from bottom to top, E, G, B, D, F. The spaces in turn spell face. But altogether, you can see the musical alphabet. If you start at A there, you get A, B, C, D, E, F, and then on top, you would have G. Now, this could keep going, especially if you add ledger lines to continue the alphabet either above or below the staff. What do I mean by that? Well, the ledger lines are these lines here. I've pointed to the first two that we add. And then you can keep going. So like I said, G was above that, that F line, so it's in a space, that ledger line denotes the space. And we put 
a letter on that and that's A, that's where it starts over. So you had A here and then you have A again. It starts on a space, goes to a line and then it would go to another space if you kept going. You see, you go below, again, same idea. You have A on a line. Anyway, but uh, you have A on the line, then B is on the space above that line, and then two ledger lines takes you to C. Meanwhile, middle C is on the first ledger line below, right here. And then you could keep on going. The letters you see here are actually the range of the guitar from the open string, uh, open six string to the first string. But you would need to add a little eight beneath that. But anyway, so those are all the letters and the repeating patterns you can see based around the treble clef. So using note flight, what we're going to do this week is we're going to create a rhythmic composition that compares rhythmic duration. Watch what I do here. So I'm going to escape from this. And I'm going to go to my note flight account. Great, I've already signed in, fantastic. I'm going to create a new account and I'm going to start from a blank score sheet, okay. And we're just gonna draw up above here on top. And so this is week two, assignments. And the first thing I'm going to do is just show the note duration by drawing it out. So I'm going to start with a whole note. Oh, I want to make that a whole note. And then I'm going to follow it with got ahead of myself. Then I want to go here and change that to a half note and try to keep it on the same line, but it doesn't really matter if you don't. And I'm going to draw it again. So I've got a whole note, then two half notes. And now I'm going to go to make it a quarter note. So I'm going to change it to a quarter and draw four quarter notes. And now I'm going to go to eighth notes. So I'm going to put a note down and change it to an eighth note. Oops. And you can just pull it down. That's kind of fun. So I'm just putting everything on a G for right now, which is actually one of the things you're gonna do here in a moment. And then I'm gonna draw 16th notes. This is the longest one to do. You might be able to cut a copy and paste. I have not figured it out. I'm just doing it the old fashioned elbow grease way. Okay, so we have a song. It may not be the most interesting one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one and a two and a three and a four and a, oh, wow, what an exciting song. But you get the idea. You could also make this a little more interesting. You could maybe compare it. I'm going to write a new song here. You could also do something like this. Maybe you'll draw one whole note. Oh, okay. Uh, that's cool way. I didn't realize you could change measure like that. I'll turn that to a whole note. And then maybe I would compare it to quarter notes right away. So I'm listening to one long, one fast, and then maybe I'd go, decide to go to eighth notes. Maybe halfway through, I would say, oh, that could be a half note. Anyway, it's fine as long as you use all of the note durations and you have a way to show that you're comparing groups. Kind of make sense? You can kind of talk me through it on your video too. So that would be your rhythmic uh, duration <laughs> exercise. Great. And what you do when you're done, you would go to export, full score, full score, continue. And then you will submit that. 
I would put your name on there as the composer so I know who it is. So you could just put me, teacher JP, and then you could export it. Make sense? Okay, let's come back to here. The next assignment is to write more on the treble clef. Well, so if you do your rhythm exercise on G, well, that counts there, so you're done. Next thing you gotta do is find middle C. Okay, let's find middle C. Oh, I gotta save it. So save your work before you go. Great. Now it's, I won't lose it. I'm gonna start a new one. And this time I'm gonna start on middle C. Great, what's the next thing I have to do? Ah, find the C above the G clef. Okay, let's do that. So how do I do that? I don't know where it's at. Okay, well, I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint that I just did. So I can see by looking at this PowerPoint, the next C is from C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Okay, face. That's right, it's the C there. So I will find C, D, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. That's one way to do it. Or if you want to remember face, F, A, C, E, or if you remember from G, it goes A to B to C. All those ways work. All right, so the last thing I have to do is create a melody that uses all the letters. Well, if I'm pressed for time, I'm just going And I'll change that to a whole note. And voila, what a beautiful melody. Hey, that's one way to do it. You can make it way more extra, uh, interesting though. And you can also repeat notes, but be sure to label what you do. Okay, so I'm not done yet. I need to go to text lyrics and write C. And then if I hit space, I can put C, that's B, A, G, F, E, D, C. Labeled, all letters covered, found the middle C and the C above it. I did it. So this is treble clef song, subtitle labeled in lyrics, composer. That's right, let's put that teacher, JP me. Lyricist, the musical alphabet. All right, I hope that helps. I look forward to seeing what you do. Be creative, have fun with it, or if you press for time, just get it done. But hopefully you'll enjoy it. And when you're done, be sure to save it, click, and then download it in a full score PDF. But hopefully uh, you'll also be talking about your song in the videos that you'll be posting, because I'd like to hear the song out there live, if I could. Okay, looking forward to seeing you next week.